Hey guys, in this video we're going to put all new drum brakes on the back of the Budget Nova. So I have everything I need to do the brakes on the back of this. I've got new drums, new shoes, new wheel cylinders, and I've got all kinds of hardware kits. Now, I bought the drums and the shoes as a kit, and they came with the hardware kit. I've bought two or three of these power stock kits, and every time I've bought one, the hardware does not have all the pieces in it. So. I bought some AC Delco hardware and it comes with the adjusting brackets and all and they are side specific so there's two different part numbers with these brackets. But anyway, I've got all of my hardware, drums, shoes, and I got my wheel cylinders. Plus we've got new brake lines for the rear end. So the first thing we're going to do is get some paint on the drums so that they'll be dry by the time we need them. Now I'm just going to put some flat black on here, some cheap flat black paint. Uh, I'm not going to use high temp paint or anything like that, but you can if you want to. I haven't had any issues using this paint so far, so it does just good enough. I sprayed some cleaner on this and blew them off. And now we're just going to put a little cheap black paint on them so they don't shine through the wheels and kind of hide a little bit. They look better that way. All right, so this car doesn't have any rear drums on it right now. It's got all the brake stuff, no drums. And I don't have the right lug nuts on these wheels either, but I'm gonna remedy that. I've got the right ones, I just haven't put them on there yet. So we're gonna get these big old tires off. Look at what we've got here as far as, far as the brakes go. And you can see all the brakes are there, just no drums. Now, one of the things you wanna do is you really don't want to take this apart and then go take the other side apart. You want to leave one side as a reference. Unless you've done a lot of brakes and you know what you're doing, it's just going to be easier to have another side you can go look at when you get ready to put everything back together. There are two main tools you need to get this apart without having to fight anything. You need one of these, and this is for taking off your little spring cups here. And you need one of these, and this is for removing and putting on springs. Now, you can get one of these that's got the big hook and stuff on the other end. It's not really applies to this, but if you can find one of these, this is the way to get it. I'll try to find one of these and this and put them in the description because they're pretty cheap tools that make drum brakes really, really easy. This car came with a built-in light hanger. Pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna try to hold the camera and show you how this little tool works. So it's got a hook on the end or it's got a, well, I'm gonna call it a hook and then it's open on the center. You start with this spring right here, you put it, this goes over your end piece. That little piece, your little hook goes in between the spring. You spin it around. That one's rusty, so it's kind of difficult. That was probably really loud, sorry. And now that spring comes off, all right? And if you don't have another side to reference, or if you end up taking both of them apart, you can always just take a picture of it. Now you put this one, same thing, you put this on that hook right there. Put the little hook inside the middle of the spring. And now that spring comes off. And now you do the same thing to this one. This part goes in there like that. This goes up on the stem. You spin it. And now that's off. Can you take that piece off? And then you do the same thing on this side. You hold the pin in the back, get this on that little cup, turn it 90 degrees. Sometimes it don't wanna, there we go. And that comes off. And then you've got this other little spring that'll come off, but <clears throat> it stays on that assembly like that, and this one's kinda dirty. You have a little spring that goes under here. Now you've got, you separate your two drums, or your two shoes from each other. And then you can unhook your emergency brake cable bracket right there. <clears throat> then you want to save these little T-pieces out of your wheel cylinder. Because I'm not sure if the kit comes with them. And now you can remove your wheel cylinder. It's two three-eighths. Usually it's two three-eighths bolts in the back. And then that comes out. And then you've got your spreader bar right here that has a spring on the end of it. And now all of your brakes are off. You want to clean all this up. 
uh, get your wheel cylinder off, clean everything up, and you can get ready to put everything back together. Okay, so as we wait for paint to dry, I'm going to give you guys a lesson on, on how the shoes work. Now, a lot of guys will notice that you have a shorter shoe here and a longer shoe here. This is a primary shoe. This is a secondary shoe. Now, contrary to what some people think, the shorter primary shoe goes on the front, towards the front of the car. The secondary shoe goes on the back of the car. You'll notice secondary is also thicker than the primary is. And the reason this is why it happens, or this is why it's necessary to do it that way, is you have a pin here, all right, that goes between these two, and you have an adjuster at the bottom between these two. When the wheel cylinder pushes out, the primary shoe is going to push out this way, all right, and it's going to it's, it's, it's going to kind of pivot a little bit. Both of them are going to push out, but this one's going to push out this way. It's going to grab the drum, and the drum is going to try to rotate with the drum. When it tries to rotate with the drum, it's going to pull away from the pin up here. The spring that's holding it to the pin is going to stretch, and it's going to push the bottom of it in like this as the drum tries to turn the shoe. The secondary shoe, the pin is going to be right here. It's also going to get caught up in the drum as it pushes out but the drum is going to pull it clockwise into the pin so it's not going to go away from the drum it's going to push into it also at the bottom of this one the primary shoe is going to push the secondary shoe into the drum so you're going to have force at the top and bottom of this shoe being pushed this way whereas this shoe the bottom of it's going to go this way and the top of it's going to go away from the pin so it's going to try to rotate so you always want the shoe with a larger lining and thicker towards the rear of the drum because you're going to get more surface area and more pressure on that than you are on the shorter primary shoe. So that's how they're designed to break. This is a Bendix floating design, I think that's what they call it. Uh, a lot of this is more by memory. But anyway, that's what that's all about. So make sure when you're putting your drum brakes on, your larger shoe goes towards the rear of the car, your shorter primary shoe goes towards the front of the car. Alright, so now that that's dry, we're going to put our new wheel cylinder in. that in there and I think about the drum brakes the shoes primary secondary shoe I learned that at the only only shop I've ever worked at the manager there Kenny I asked him why the larger shoe always went on the back thinking he wouldn't have an answer and he melted my brain with that little bit of knowledge so I never forgot it let's see It is very easy to break those bolts off in the wheel cylinder because they're not very big and a lot of times they're old so tighten them up make sure they're tight but if you uh, give it too many ugga duggas you're going to break it off in the wheel cylinder. That's not All right we're going to put our little T's in. It takes a second to get them kind of push in there a little bit but they'll go in. And I've got my brakes, my old brakes, over here on the floor, kind of halfway put together, kind of laying there in the order that they go in, um, just so I can glance down at it if I need to. All right, so I made sure that my parts, and there is, like I said, there's a right side and a left side to these, to this, all this stuff, there's a right side and left side, so you wanna make sure you got the right pieces. That's another good reason not to take both sides apart at the same time. I'm looking at this, kind of laying out what goes where, I've got my little bracket that goes under this piece that kind of goes in kind of like that. Um, now I've got my other hardware kit right here and I've got to find the pieces to make up the rest of this to match that. So let's go with this spring first. So whenever we're going to need that spring which is that one right there. So it's kind of set up the same way. So we put that back. We got that one. Then we need this short spring right here. And we're gonna make sure that it's, we find one that's set up like it is. Nope, wrong one. 
There we go, that's the right one. So that's the one we want, and that goes between there and there. So we'll put that back. Like I said, keep this together just for reference. It'll help you out. And we got this long spring that goes from here to here. So we've got all that set out. We've got our short spring right here, right here. And now we need our flat spring that goes on our crossbar, which it didn't come with a new one, and it didn't come with a new piece here. So I'm gonna put those old ones back on. All right, so first thing you do, you take your primary shoe, the little short one. You hook it to your emergency brake bracket like this. Set it up here. You've got your pin that goes, a new pin that goes in the back, or your old pin, if you didn't buy a whole kit. Some of you guys will just be changing the shoes and the drums, or getting the drums turned if there's enough left of them. All right, now you've got your bracket, and it's got a cup on it that goes there. But first, you've got to put your, leave that sitting there for a second. You got to put your bracket together. Like this. Put your cup in here, and that all goes over your pin, which is kind of a pain to get it all together. You might want to put it all on the shoe first and do it that way. And then put it up there and put your pin through it. Take one of your short springs, put it over that. Take your locking cup, make sure that the slot on the locking cup is lined up with the pin the best you Got it locked in. And you can see that our pin is locked in good. Maybe you can see it. So now we've got this side in. We're going to take our spreader bar. This side goes over the emergency brake bracket and the shoe. This side gets the spring on it. We'll slide that down in there. And now you can do your other shoe which is a little less aggravating because you don't have this bracket in the way. But you can get your other shoe up here and put your pin in it. And some of this stuff you can get back together if it moves around a little bit it's not that big a deal you can get it back together later side is hooked up. I promise you it's easier when you're not trying to make sure you're blocking the camera, not blocking the camera and all that stuff. Now you want to work on getting your springs in. So I'm going to move this down some. I'm going to try to do it this way. So I'm going to take this spring, put it under this bracket.
There. So I'll take my first spring, hook it under here, hook it over that. Now I take my second spring, it goes in there, and then I take this tool, I take this tool, get under there, and I can hook it over this. Because this has got a little, uh, curve in it. So now I can take my spring for the other side, take it, put it in the other side, and then it can go up over the top. And now my top. Now sometimes getting this one on can be pretty aggravating because you don't have the the tool does not help as much with this one. It can, I'll try it, but sometimes it just doesn't. It doesn't work as well with this one. But it did that time, so that's pretty good. So now we've got that spring on. Now we gotta get our adjuster in. Okay, so before you put your adjuster in, what you want to do is you want to match up your springs that is your adjuster spring tension. So this spring right here, and if I take it out, you'll notice it hooks from the back here and into the front there. So I'm going to take it out, and this kit comes with two different springs. It comes with this one, and then it comes with this one. And obviously this one is bent the same way as the original. This is going to be for the left side. So we're going to use the red one. We're going to hook it back here behind this from the back where it goes. And then you want to take needle nose, channel locks or something and you want to be able to hook this in the other side. Now you can put your adjuster in there and you'll be ready to adjust your shoes and put your drum on. So we're going to take the adjuster, close it all the way up, and we'll probably have to pull out pretty hard on the brakes to get the adjuster in there, but it's not too bad. And you'll notice that your spring, if you pull this up, you can probably see that your spring goes over this so the spring's not binding in the teeth of your adjuster. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned the inside of my drum with some brake clean. Now I'm going to take and see if my shoes are anywhere close. I've got my adjuster all the way in, so they're as close together um, as they're going to get. Now also you want to make sure you can, you can see where you can move this whole assembly and it's not centered on the backing plate. And this backing plate's a little bit up, but you want to make sure you got it kind of centered on there because if it's not, then your uh, wheel studs will not line up with the holes in the drum and it won't slide on. So kind of slide it on the bottom. Spin it around, all right, and it slides on. Now the thing is, I can I can hear a little bit of friction, but it's pretty loose. Um, that's probably pretty close. I got lucky with it being all the way in, but that's probably because it's brand new shoes and a brand new drum. If the drum has been turned, you'll have to adjust the brakes out some if it's an old drum that's been turned because the drum's not gonna be as thick. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this out just a little bit. I'm gonna pull my little adjuster up Unscrew my wheel just a little bit. And I'm going to put it back in and see if I tighten that up any. Yeah. See, you just, you just want a little bit of drag, not much at all. And these are going to self-adjust somewhat, especially when you're going in reverse. But I've got a little bit of adjustment on there, a little bit of drag, but it's not really stopping it because you don't want to overheat them. But you want to hear it, you want to hear it grabbing. 
but you don't want to, you know, you can back it up a little bit and you can feel it grab a little more. So, so you know that you can hear the shoes touching the drum. You know you've got it touching. It slid on fairly easy, not super easy, but well, that's pretty easy. But you can look in the drum and you can see that it's actually making a contact pattern. All right, so. <clears throat> that's a good way to do it. Now I'm gonna jump to the other side and get it done. Okay, so something I just noticed that I'm going to have to correct, but not right now. The emergency brake cables, the reason that the short uh, shoe, the, sec the primary shoe was on the back on both of these is because somebody has switched the backing plates from side to side because the emergency brake cable is coming out of the rear instead of the front. Now, I'm going to have to correct that just because I don't want these dangling back here. I've seen people do something similar to this and they just you know, time to the leaf spring or something like that because um, they, if they're racing or they don't have an emergency brake because it's in the way of the exhaust or whatever. I've seen these, there's brackets on the uh, frame that hold the front of these and you can zip time up that way. So uh, if I've got the stuff, I'll put an emergency brake back on this car, but if not, I'll leave them dangling out of the front like they're supposed to be. So for right now, I'm going to finish the brake job the way I'm doing it. And then I've got to replace the pinion seal and stuff on there. So when I replace the pinion seal, I'm going to pull the axles out, and when I pull the axles out, I'll swap these backing plates from side to side. But for now, we're going to leave it like it is. I'm going to finish this side. Okay, all right, so now this side is together and you can tell what I did here. I actually put the small shoe on the back because this side is gonna unbolt and go over to the other side. So I went ahead and just moved it so I didn't have to take this completely apart. The other side, I'll have to take apart when I swap it because once I move it over here, the primary shoe is gonna be on the back and I'll have to swap that side. So I went ahead and put this one on backwards uh, for now until I get the axles out and can swap the back and plates with everything intact. So I take all my old brake parts and I put them in my box of brake parts. You never know when you're going to need a spring or a bracket or something, some kind of hardware that your brake stuff doesn't come with. One of the adjusters, a small piece. Now a lot of this stuff is rusted and junk, but some of it will save you from having to make a part run to the store. Um, so I like to save stuff like that. All right, well, that's pretty much got the drum brakes on the back buttoned up. Now, one thing that you didn't see me do was hook up the metal lines or disconnect them because they weren't there. 
So I have new ones that I'm going to put on there, but that's going to be part of the disc brake conversion for the front of the car. Now, originally I was going to keep drums all the way around to save on the budget, but I've ordered drums three times. Twice they were wrong. The other time I've just waited months. I finally ordered a disc brake kit. It's already here. I'm going to start on that right now. Start videoing that, and that should be the next video. So we'll see you guys next time. Like, leave a comment, subscribe if you feel like it, and like the channel. We'll see you next time.